Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to show uh, something that I found really cool as I've been learning Rust. Um, some of you might know that uh, I started using Rust as a way to build a little uh, database server sort of thing. Uh, and in, in doing that, I needed to uh, parse SQL statements. Uh, so I actually, I did a little bit of research and found that it seems like the, the go-to parsing library in Rust is something called NOM, N-O-M. Um, and it's a little bit different than parsers that, I, that I've used in the past. Uh, the way th that NOM is designed is it uh, uh, composes larger parsers as sequences uh, of smaller parsers. Uh, so things like um, alternatives or just tuples, you know, a sequence of, of um, tokens, more or less. Um, well, realistically, a sequence of parsers, which can be as simple as a what they call a tag, which is basically just a, a string of characters, um, or as complex as you know the full SQL language. Now, I did not implement a parser for the entire SQL language, not even ANSI SQL, uh, certainly not MySQL with all of its additions to it. Uh, I've just been implementing the bare minimum to accomplish what I'm trying to do. And in the the you know the important part of this video, uh, I actually implemented the describe table statement. Um, I had already implemented the ability to uh, create a table, but I wanted to implement the ability to describe a table. And you'll see in the video uh, that I'm not doing anything super crazy. Uh, I, I'm not validating uh, the, the data table definition. Um, it is just uh, basically a YAML file that lists out fields and then their, their values. So it's a, it's a key value pair. And the, the key is the name of the field, and the value is something presumably that is a um, a column column definition, a standard SQL column definition, or in this case, MySQL column definition. Um, so, yeah, I found NOM to be really really handy, really easy to uh, to get to get a hang of. So easy, in fact, that um, I didn't write any unit tests for this. Uh, now, I did run into a couple couple issues here and there uh, where I kind of wish that I did write unit tests, but every other parser that I've written, I've written unit tests for because they are so complicated that if you get something wrong, it's really difficult to track that down. With NOM, so far, I haven't really felt that there, uh, that there was anything that I couldn't just reason through. Um, and the, the couple situations where I have gotten hung up, I've been able to kind of look through the code and realize that, oops, I tried to uh, match on spaces too many times, I think was, was the, the one example that I can think of. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to just roll the video, uh, sped up a little bit, and provide some commentary along the way. Hope you enjoy it, and uh, I'll catch you at the end. All right, so this project is basically b uh, broken into three different files. Uh, one is the, the actual SQL um, parser, which I think is uh, sql.rs. Um, and first, I actually wanted to go to the documentation to, uh, to make sure that I was following the, um, the syntax. And it turned out that I learned there were, there were a couple different ways to, to uh, provide the statement. I thought it was just uh, describe table, um, but there are actually a couple different ways uh, to, to run the same thing in MySQL. Um, so first, NOM expects individual parsers to be, they're, they're basically functions that take in your input stream, in this case it's just a string, um, and return an I result of the input type, in this case, uh, a borrowed string, uh, and a um, some other object. Uh, this is useful for the, um, in, in my case, it's basically the AST, so it's the statement. Um, and you can see lines 260 to 264, I'm basically building up a parser uh, of nom functions. 
and then I'm running the parser on the string, and then I, I return uh, kind of wrapped up again. Um, so there is a little little bit of almost boilerplate here, uh, but it actually uh, kind of makes sense. Um, now here I copied some code that I already had because I actually for debugging I I had saved a um, the result of a describe table and that's that was just a kind of a standard packet that uh, response packet that I've been using um, and just to make sure that everything worked you can see I ran a describe command describe stuff and got my my response back but now it's time to actually return some some actual useful um, information uh, and not just a hard-coded response. Uh, so first I, I went looking through the documentation to see uh, if there was a, a clear definition of the the binary result for a describe um, a, 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 the describe table uh, command or query and it, it turns out that it, it's just another query response. So just like you would select whatever from some table and you would get a query response, the response for this select, or sorry, describe table, uh, it, is, it, it is basically the same. It's the same uh, response structure. So here I decided to uh, write a function in, in my store that would actually go to the file and pull that out. But I started by co just copying and pasting the same code that I was using for um, my basically handling the select statements. So here we're creating result set, and if, if we can't find what we're looking for, we kind of create an empty result set. Um, later on, I'll, I'll do uh, more proper error handling, but this was just to make sure that things don't blow up on me. Um, and you can see I, I'm still learning Rust, so um, I think I forgot how to do this, or maybe I, I I don't know that I'd ever done this before, so I needed to figure out what what I was actually doing, um, and what better place to go than Stack Overflow. So here we're creating a, a vector uh, with well two two fields um, because you can see in the bottom right hand corner or kind of on that, the, the right side of that terminal window. The, the, the titles of the, this table that gets generated, uh, the, the titles are table and create table. So I just created two fields, one called table, one called create table. And now the rows, um, there's only gonna be one row, uh, but I need to provide the table name and then the, the actual create table uh, command the create table query that will create this uh, this this table in, in my my mock database here um, and of course the, the classic uh, stack overflow answer you should do this other thing so I uh, started playing around with this and eventually uh, got what I was looking for I, I'm trying to get the table name out so basically have the path to a particular file um, and I wanted to actually get the table name out. And I think ultimately after several failed attempts here, um, I think I ended up just, just passing it into the function. We'll, we'll see in a few minutes. And you can see kind of frust some frustration in my, you know, scrolling up and down. How did I do this before? What did I do before? Because I felt like I'd, I'd done this before. Um, and now one of the frustrations that I have with Rust is the idea that there are two different types of strings. Um, this has bitten me in more than one occasion. Uh, and from what I can tell, I, I've talked to some other Rust developers, uh, and that, it, that is a common frustration. It is a little weird that there are two different types of st essentially string data types. Um, and it's, it's just one of the quirks that, that Rust has. So mm, good to know. But, you know, that's fun. So here I'm still trying to just get the table name out. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the name of the table so that I can dump that into the response. And I think I finally got it for now anyway. And, and now I have to actually get the, the create table statement. And for this case, that's going to be really, 
you know, essentially conceptually straightforward. I need to pull back the, the schema YAML file, iterate through all the fields, or all the keys listed in the, the map that's, that's in that YAML file, and then just dump out the key and its corresponding value. And you can see here I'm just formatting the two uh, with a space in between them. And uh, it turns out that I, I'd actually written this stringify helper function um, because for what I'm doing, I wanted to stringify lots of YAML things. Just just turn it into a string. Um, I assume that there's you know, a clear, straightforward reason to be doing this. So I don't really care about uh, data types too much. It's basically just, you know, trust me, I know what this is, turn it into a string. Um, so here I end up uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to um, join things together. And one of the other things that, that I've struggled with in Rust is the, this uh, collect method. Um, Sometimes it's it's pretty smart and figures out what type things are supposed to be. Sometimes it doesn't, um, and and that's that's kind of frustrating. But it's also um, a little bit weird. It might take some getting used to. When you call the dot map method, you don't really get a collection back. You get a it's like a, a map interim value, which yes, it does behave like a collection. But in order to actually get a, a true collection or a, a vec back, you call collect, and then you then you have a vec, and you can you can uh, manipulate it the way you would any other vec. So here we go. Now let's let's uh, fix up our create table statement, and now it's starting to look a lot like we expect. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, click subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when other videos come out. I really appreciate that. This channel wouldn't be here if it, if it weren't for all of you wonderful people out there. Uh, and if you have any comments, questions, topics for future videos, go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. I really enjoy reading those and, and responding to everybody who, who writes. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.